why are German men and women completely naked in their gyms? And why are they so particular about what I wear? Hey guys, and welcome back to our channel. I am Donnie, and along with my wife, Aubrey, we are two Americans currently living in Germany and sharing all of our experiences living and traveling throughout Europe. Today's video is a little bit of a checkup for all of you guys, as we are now about three months into our New Year's resolutions to finally get fit and fab. Well, to be honest, I don't make New Year's resolutions, but I have noticed the attendance at our gym has been much higher these first few months of the year compared compared to what it normally is because of those that do. But that isn't the only thing that I've noticed about our German gym. After paying for a gym membership for a few years and periodically visiting, I have also noticed a few differences to the gym experience in Germany versus the US that I thought would be interesting to share. From what we wear or not wear to what we use in the gym, that's exactly what we're gonna talk about today in our video. You know you wanna sit in the sauna. But with your mama? We often give the disclaimer that our experiences are specific to where we are originally from, a state in the southern US called Oklahoma, and where we live now in the southwestern German state of Rheinland Pfalz. And that both of these places have their own unique subcultures that may not be representative of the two countries as a whole. However, I know that there often is a major difference amongst people's gym experiences, even from one street to the next in the same city, which can be based on the type of gym, the cost of the gym, etc. Therefore, let me know your individual experiences with these things in the comments below and where you are from. Also, if you are from a different country than these two, I want to hear about what these things are like where you live. Let's first cover one of the biggest and important differences, and that is what a building in which you go to work out in is called, because this can lead to some major confusion between the two countries. There are, of course, a lot of different terms that can be used for these places, but in the US, the most common term is simply gym, which is short for gymnasium. Now, if you come to Germany and see this word, don't go there with your workout equipment and expect to sign up for a membership, because in Germany, this word is pronounced Das Gymnasium. Das Gymnasium. And is actually a secondary university prep school. Now, the differences between the German education system and the US's should be a completely different video because of how complicated that subject can be. So for the sake of simplicity and what the important information is for this video, we'll just say that a gymnasium in Germany is what we would call a high school in the US. But if you find yourself wanting to work out in Germany and don't want to end up at a German high school, then you are going to want to go to a fitness studio. Yeah, that's three S's in a row in a word. Generally speaking, we have talked before about how when you walk around Germany, people look just a little bit healthier on average than in the US, and this is supported by the data, at least in terms of obesity. It shouldn't be any surprise that the US has higher obesity rates than Germany, and according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, in 2017 to 2018, the US obesity prevalence was 42.4%, in comparison with about 23% in Germany, according to the Robert Koch Institute. However, an interesting note is that the US actually has a higher rate of gym memberships with roughly 20% of Americans having a gym membership in 2019 in comparison with 14% of Germans. Now, there can be a lot of factors that play into the obesity rates and just simply having a gym membership doesn't do you any good unless you use it effectively. But what we have found a big difference between the US and Germany is often mindset towards health. Now, this is a grossly overgeneralized statement, but in our experience, we have found that very often when Americans think of health or losing weight, it often means going to a gym or dieting. Whereas in Germany, staying healthy generally is more of a lifestyle. Germans tend to be much more active. They get out on a walk, they bike on a sunny day, they show greater restraint with their food portions, etc. And this isn't to say that Germans don't also jump on 
trendy diets or workout routines, but they do often encourage a more sustainable, healthy lifestyle. However, there is one alternative to gym memberships that Americans do incorporate into their lives that is unheard of in Germany, and that is mall walking. We actually had some of our European friends who were watching the popular American TV show, Modern Family. In an episode they were watching, one of the older main characters was accidentally mistaken in a shopping mall as a mall walker because of the tracksuit he was wearing and his age, and then it showed a group of elderly people dressed similar to him in a group speed walking. Our friends were kind of confused by this and asked us if this really was a thing or just a weird joke in the show, and well, this really is a thing. Most of the time, this is primarily an elderly person's activity, but they go to malls because of the large indoor air conditioned area and they power walk around and around as a free form of exercise. We were able to prove this to our European friends by actually sending them a picture of a unique aspect of some American malls, and that is of distance markers on the floors of malls, just like on a track, so that mall walkers can keep track of exactly how far they have walked. Real quick, guys, I want to take a moment to thank all of our patrons over on Patreon for supporting our channel. What you guys do is is such a huge support to our channel and I want you to know once again that I truly appreciate it. Also, if all of you watching would take a moment to hit those like and subscribe buttons, it would mean a lot in supporting our channel. Now back to the video. There is one social difference between German and American culture that I have talked about in other videos, and that is the fact that Americans love small talk and Germans tend to hate it. Yet, Germans have a cultural norm of if you are sitting in a room or in the vicinity of someone else indoors, you always greet them and then say goodbye. But don't include any conversation in between. The typical example of this cultural difference would be a doctor's office waiting room. In the US, if someone else walks into the waiting room, you typically won't say anything to them, but you might smile at each other if you make eye contact. However, in Germany, the general expectation is that everybody in the room will say hello to a person entering and then tschüss to anybody leaving. I have found this to be very true in German gym locker rooms as well. Every time someone walks into the locker room, everybody has to give a hello before moving on with their business. And then if someone leaves, everybody gives them a choose. Now it is a given that both in the US and Germany, sometimes people end up seeing the same people over and over again if they are regulars. And eventually these formalities might turn into more of conversations over time. But in general, from my experience, we greet, stand and change in silence. And then it could be 10 minutes later of silence, we'll walk out and say goodbye into social interaction. Now, in an American locker room, it is a little bit different than a doctor's waiting room in that you might say hi to someone if they walk in, but then often at that point, there is this awkward need to make small talk if you have acknowledged each other. If no small talk is made, then it feels kind of at that point weird to say goodbye as if you both have just acknowledged the fact that neither of you couldn't come up with something to talk about, so you often won't say goodbye. In general, I do appreciate this German form of interaction in the locker room, but based on my cultural norms I am used to, I still feel an awkward tension after greeting and then standing next to someone for an extended period of time in silence before then just saying goodbye. So how do you feel about this based on what you're used to in your cultural norms? Does the silence between greeting and then saying goodbye also bother you and you do talk in the locker room? Or do you prefer that social distance? Because I have only ever been to my single German gym, and because this next difference is so strangely different from any American gym, if I wouldn't have seen other people talking about it on the internet, I would have assumed it was just a quirk of the building that my German gym is in. So I wanna know if your gym is the same way and that it doesn't have a single free water fountain in it. Water fountains are a staple item in every single American gym, and they often will have multiple spread out across the building. Some often even even have special spouts for you to be able to easily fill up your water bottle if needed. And of course, all of this is free. Well, I know how our viewers like to comment how nothing in life is free and you're still somehow paying for it. So I'm making this statement to take the wind out of their sails. However, if you want to drink in a German gym, besides bringing your own from home, you typically have to actually pay for a drink subscription service where they give you a special water bottle and you can fill it up at a drink station, or you can buy a drink from one of the workers at the gym if you 
don't pay for the subscription. But I've seen this online a lot where Americans across Germany mentioned that they are shocked to find out that a gym where hydration is so important doesn't provide water to those working out unless they spend extra money. So along with me wanting to know if this is the case at your gym as well, another random hydration related question that I have is knowing how much Germans love to drink carbonated water, do Germans also hydrate after a workout with sparkling water? Or in this case, do Germans drink still water like an American typically would? As we've discussed in other videos, Germans are much more prone to not wear their shoes inside their homes and will often take their shoes off upon entering their home, then put on slippers. This of course is to keep the dirty outside floors that the shoes have walked on from spreading their nasty dirtiness on the home floors. Well, the same applies to gym floors and equipment. Rather than getting all the equipment dirty or floors where someone might be getting down with their hands to do push-ups, you're supposed to bring clean gym only shoes to the gym. So just like going home and putting on your slippers in a German gym, you come in and put on your gym shoes. This is of course in contrast to what I would say Americans do where they wear their gym shoes they're going to work out in from home to the gym. Now I'm interested in knowing from our German audience though, is this something that you always practice or something that you know you probably should do, but maybe don't always do? Speaking of what you wear in the gym, one of the biggest differences between German and American gyms are saunas and gyms. Now, I really shouldn't say speaking of what you wear in the gym, but rather what you don't wear in the gym, because in Germany, saunas are completely nude. Now, as an American, you may be thinking, yeah, there are old men that go into the sauna nude at my gym, but Germans take it a step further because they are also traditionally co-ed. So in the US, I honestly have never been to a gym that had a sauna and saunas typically aren't necessarily very popular in the US, although a lot of gyms may still have them. They do seem to be maybe growing a little bit in popularity as some celebrity figures with cult followings, namely Joe Rogan, actively promote their health benefits, but overall, they aren't nearly as big of a deal as they are in Germany. But then again, the list of countries in which saunas are a bigger deal than in Germany is a fairly short list anyways. In any case, if you do you go to an American gym and there is a sauna, you would never be sitting naked with the opposite sex, and most of the time you would be wearing a swimsuit. Please. Like a sauna in here. Huh? I'm actually going to sit on this topic for a second longer because with as shocking of a thing that this is for Americans, I'm always surprised at how few Americans have any idea that naked mixed gender saunas are a pretty major part of German culture. So for our non-German audience, Germans take their sauna culture very seriously. And in fact, there's a famous unverified story that while the Berlin Wall was falling, former Chancellor Angela Merkel first had to go to her weekly sauna before going to the historic occasion. And I'm talking outside of gyms, saunas exist in a big way as well. And entire sauna spas are easily found throughout the country, which are always 100% mixed and in the nude. Now this also could and should be an entire video on its own as well, but to briefly answer a couple of the biggest questions foreigners have when they find out about new German saunas, one, why are they naked? And two, why are they split between men and women? Wear a swim why can't you wear a swimsuit? Why? Says who? Like, what is the difference? There's zero difference in the benefits of it. He it's some cultural claims thing? It's a so first, there are a couple of reasons for them being naked according to saunaorphan.at. Bathing suits, which are often made of synthetic materials, can emit fumes in the heat, which is not particularly pleasant for those sweating with you and can even be harmful to your health. And because clothing prevents the effect of the sauna, namely sweating and evaporation, and thus the body's own cooling by collecting the sweat in the swimwear. The dripping wet clothes also provide a prime breeding ground for bacteria and can possibly lead to infections. And as to why they aren't divided by gender, the reason for this is normally simply answered by saying, because the human body is just that to Germans, a human body. And everybody has one, so men and women being mixed isn't an issue or sexualized for them. However, most saunas will still offer a women-only sauna day at least once a week. And to further prove this argument for being naked, just like I alluded to in my intro, it also isn't unheard of for Germans to have a family outing to the sauna where the whole family sits naked next to each other, sweating it out. Now, I know this is going to bring the comments we have read a thousand times before that Germans don't get why a naked body is so shocking for Americans, 
etc etc and that is fine it's just different cultural norms and different things people are used to or not used to but let me hear all of your thoughts and comments down below if you know of any other differences between german and american gyms be sure to drop those in the comments below and to see who made it this far into the video the random question of the week is what is your favorite German movie I should watch to help practice my German? Thanks so much for watching, guys. Be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, and we will see you in our next video. Completely naked in their gyms? Why? But if you... But if you... But if you find yourself now in an Ameri... Now in an... Now in an American locker room... Hello, brown cow. Hello, brown cow. Check, check, check.